Welcome to Posh Nosh. Hello. Extraordinary food for ordinary people. Now, today we're going to make lunch for our builder, Barry. Most days he has lunch in his van about half past 11. That's breakfast time. Absolutely. He usually has something like this. What I call builder's fish and chips. But today he's in for a treat because we're going to give him... Architect's fish and chips. Look at that. Would you eat that? Certainly not. I'd rather starve to death. Quite right, darling. Soggy, tired, tasteless. What are we going to do about chips? We're going to do what any good architect does. Tear them down and start again. When I'm creating a dish, I always ask my favourite architect, Angus Paxton McLeish, to build me a model. I love the way Angus uses space. Me too. Um, you can't actually eat this. No. Now... This is just a model. <laughs> so... Now you'll notice, I haven't used potatoes. We've taken the potatoes out of potatoes. Yes. There are so many other root vegetables crying out to be chips. Parsnip, turnip, swede, beetroot. As you can see, these have already been embarrassed. But to get that perfect chip shape, you'll need to borrow a tall man's little finger. But where am I going to... Thank you, darling. Cut your vegetables into finger-shaped strips. By the way, Barry's hard at work upstairs, so if you hear someone banging away in the bedroom... That'll be a first. <laughs> Chips. Roasted, not fried. That's the secret. So, first, pop them into hot bubbling water for four minutes. No more, or they'll get scared. Put that down. Simon's mother, Lady Marchmont, gave me this colander just before she died, which was sad, but also happy, because it's a lovely colander. So... Disappoint the veg. Give them a frisson. They like that. Now, always roast your veg in the finest olive oil we can afford. Can you tell the difference? I bloody well can. Simon's going to do a blindfold test for us. I can always sniff out the Tuscan. Thanks. I'm looking for that extra virgin purity. Hmm. That's been round the block a couple of times. Common old tart. Mm. Mm. What mummy would have called a vile little hussy. Mm. Mm. Oh, heaven. Oh. That's an absolute Britney. Tuscan extra virgin. Yes. Well done, darling. Wonderful time. Oh, get on with it. Matisse the oil sparingly over your vegetables and pop it into your agar. Oh, thank you, darling. If you haven't got an agar... Beauty is food. Food, beauty. Batter hides beauty. Imagine Brad Pitt coated in this hideous crispy orange gunk. What a desecration. I know which side my Brad is battered. <laughs> I'm not joking. Sorry, no. Soul Haddock... Oh, there's Barry. He's doing the shelves in Simon's dressing room. Soul Haddock Cod Place. With their firm white flesh, they're all ideal for frying. You can buy enough cod fillet to feed three people for five to six pounds. Good value. But what is good value? Some people say that people carry as a good value. They pay £40,000 to drive an ugly provincial bus. Think of the fish you could buy for that sort of money. Beluga sturgeon from the Caspian Sea. Look at those lips. It's a magnificent creature. I'd be happy to defrost it with my breath. Oh, that sounds nice. This is priceless. But you can buy it for just £43,000. That's what we paid for this. And you'll be able to feed far more than three people with it. Of course, you could say for that money, you can buy a two-bedroom house in Leicester. I rest my case. It needs to go back now. All right. Sturgeon is, of course, famous for its roe. You'd know it better as caviar. Don't touch the stuff. It's naff. It's so 1980s. <laughs> it's loads of money, red braces, naff. This is what Simon looked like in the 80s. Oh. You look good there. 
That's not me. Oh, right. <laughs> about 24 hours before you need it, cut a portion of sturgeon, about six ounces per... Um... Darling, can you give me a life? Hmm? Uh, it's all right, thanks. Got it. Um, pour hot bubbling water over your fish until it's nicely, completely nice. Then blade run your knife under the fish's skin until it's thoroughly ashamed. Now, while I pillage the fish for bones for the stock, Simon, talk us through the wine. There's a famous saying. Like schoolboys, Rieslings are best enjoyed young. Uh, school days? What? Yes. This is a 1998 Nackenheimer Bundelok. Green apples, lime, peach, honey, raisin, rose petals, cherry blossom, freshly mown grass, and on the finish, that characteristic hint of petrol. And I don't mean that pathetic unleaded stuff. I mean good old-fashioned four-star. I can't wait for Barry to try this. Very much not what he usually drinks, which is probably strong tea with five sugars in a mug with a huge pair of tits on it. My uncle was a builder. Well, not that he built houses like ours. Well, he couldn't have. It was built in 1685. And it's still standing. <laughs> anyway, onions, carrots, parsley, celery, thyme, bay leaf, fish skin and bone. That's what you need for a good fish stock. Oh, and a large 18th century spoon. Lady Marchmont again. Annoy your stock for 25 minutes, then strain. Take strips of your filleted surgeon and place them in the strained stock. Then re-annoy till tender. When it's ready, introduce your fish to your vegetable chips and marry them on a duvet of rice paper. And there you have it, Architects Fish and Chips. You'll find all these recipes in the Poshnosh cookbook, which is also available in paperback if you're not serious. To make Barry feel at home, we thought we'd recreate the look of that classic British chip I showed you earlier. Instead of a potato eye, daub on a little black olive paste. He won't know what it is. Let's call him down. Oh, is it Riesling? Good for you. Fabulous work, by the way. Don't know how to thank you. I paid a bill. <laughs> Mummy always used to pay the tradesmen with rose bushes. Tuck in, Barry. We didn't think you'd want the bother of uh, sitting down at a table with a knife and fork. Not your normal lunch, eh? No. No, I don't usually have anything this fancy. Oh. Yeah, the wife does a uh, ciabatta, a bit of mozzarella, sun-dried tomato or something. A bit of pesto dressing. Mm. I like what you've done here. Roasted the veg. Very North African. Where in North Africa? What? You said North Africa. Where exactly? Oh, I'm sorry. Tunis? I... Tripoli? Massamatru? I don't know. Bury everyone. Join us next week on Posh Nosh when I'll be disabling a partridge in its own jus. Unless Barry has a better idea. What can I for a goose in a bed With a sheet turned down so bravely For tonight I shall sleep in a cold open field From the Posh Nosh range, dried John Dory thins in Basil Aioli. Along with a raggle-taggle gypsies all